Okay, so we're here with my buddy Gilly. Got a sawmill. Tell us about your sawmill, Gilly. What year is it? What 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 you did to get it here? And it's a 1901 Enterprise Mill. Um, I actually just found out like a month ago that the State Forest Department was the first ones that bought the Enterprise Mills, and they were actually set up in all the state-owned woods around the area, and the original bridges and forts and fire towers and stuff that. Uh, they had they cut their own timber with the enterprises so any of them that are still around more than likely that's where they came from people just bought them at sales and that's how they got saved but I found it in a guy's barn in Bellevue he bought it at an auction in Sandusky he said the only reason he bought it is because they were gonna scrap it and he didn't want to see it go to the junkyard but he had two other ones and he said he's never run one in his life but he just didn't want to see them go to the crap. junk so he got them but um, obviously it's a hand set mill it's a left handed mill which means you load the log from the left side of the blade um, everything's gear driven and pulleys um, it was originally run flat belt off a steam engine I ran it like that for a little while and then I made up the couplers and adapters and everything but this is a leather pulley here there's 10 layers of leather on there I gotta rebuild it once a year um, this one's leather and that's for adjusting your speed the further out on the flywheel it is, the faster it goes. The closer to center, the slower. And you just that with that lever? Yep. And then this and then handle here, drive. this just moves the flywheel into one pulley or the other. And then uh, and then you push it forward. Forward to go forward and back to come back. Um, this is the tool for changing the teeth. You stick that in here, and the hole there lines up. You stick a pin through, and then it twists out, and then you twist it back, and that allows you to just replace the insert of the tooth here. Um, you showed him a video earlier uh, how to sharpen the teeth. the teeth. Um, and then down in the pit, down below, there's two lines coming in, and it goes underground, and then it blows it into the building out here. Um, this is the drum that brings the carriage back and forth. So when you wrap the cable on that drum, you have to start in the middle of the cable. One end wraps this way, the other end wraps this way, and they both go down around them pulleys, and then they'll come back and they're fastened to the carriage back here. Each end is fastened here and they just work together and that's what pulls it back and forth. This wasn't on here, this was added, but this is, this tells me the distance from here to this side of the blade. So every pull of the handle moves it closer. But the way they used to do it before, you can see they had a gauge under here. But you'd have no way of knowing where you were at, obviously, once there was a log land there. You know, yeah. you couldn't see it. And then these pegs back here, between these pegs and these shims, you could set select which peg you wanted it to stop against. And then each full pull up to here equals a different increment. So once their log was squared up, they could set like the peg it's on right now when they pulled it it would cut an inch and a half board or if you moved it up a peg it might only be a one inch and then obviously you can fine tune with those but um, twist the handle one way to pull forward twist the handle the other way here's your indicator which way you're going once it's down you can ratchet it back but you said she was wore out and that didn't work yeah I'm so tired it's a 1901, right? 1901 Enterprise, yep. It's and you got lead Babbitt bearings. That's what the two big bearings are. You're saying you got to get them reported at some point, or yep. need to. Yep. Yeah. But and 
the blade you said's hammered for the RPM that you're running? Yeah, so you tell you tell the blade doctor virtually what RPM you're running, which we got 540 from the tractor, and then he hammers it. So when they hammer the blade, they're putting a cup in it. So to the naked eye, when it's sitting still, it has a dish in it. And then once you run it up to speed, it stretches the blade and it runs true. Otherwise, if you just cut a circle out of a piece of plate steel and threw some teeth on it, you'd have a, wobble. a wobbly blade. Over time, when the teeth eventually wear out, you know, and you're tugging on the blade one side or the other, or you're hitting stuff, you have to have it hammered. And depending on the guy hammering it, how he does, you might have to adjust the lead in the saw. Mm -hmm. So that's what these bolts here are. There's one on each side of this bearing, and there's one on each side of that bearing. And all that does is you run the carriage down, and because if your blade is perfectly square to the log, when you cut down and then you bring it back, your saw is going to hit on the way back, and you don't want that because the back side of the blade could flick your log up. Mm -hmm. So what you want is you want the front side, the leading side of your blade, to be an eighth inch closer to the carriage than the back side, and that. So virtually what you're doing is you're cutting like this. Obviously, it's not that extreme though. Yeah. But you can kind of notice it. Right. Running. But like I said, if you don't have the lead in it, it's going to catch on the backside and you're running the risk of your board flicking up, but and you battled the blade when you first got it, didn't you? You said it wasn't hammered yep. right or something. Yep. You was, couldn't get it to cut a good log. Yep. And then I had the, the filing was off. That was before I realized that you know it had to be the square file and the pitch had to be the same on all of them but um, they say a good blade as long as you take care of it and keep it sharp you can get 30 years out of a blade when you're cutting ash and pine especially about every log depending on the size obviously I spray some deep creep or PB blaster on it just because the sap will stick to the blade and then you'll start getting some sawdust build up on it and that just makes it sing right through but uh, working on finding a replacement mill but I don't know I don't want a brand new one but who knows getting tired of the old one already well I just need something a little bit newer your uh, sawmill business blew up bigger than you thought it would didn't it yeah absolutely. Or your, your hobby right. turned into a business right hobbies are supposed to cost you money not make you money but Good that's hobbies make you money, though. Yeah, that's right. There ain't many of those around, though. No. We got a Massey 1130 with Perkins turbo diesel running it right now. I bought a 5.9 Cummins stationary power unit. I'm just waiting on a couple gears to be made. And then that'll sit here, and that'll save a lot of room around here. The plan is eventually to have an edger sitting over here. Instead of, like, your 17-inch wide board, you know, we could run that through instead of having to resaw it with mm -hmm. this. That save a lot of time, especially making hay wagons and stuff. But you had a what was it 340? Was that Perkins that run it before, didn't you? The one you sold the Z. Yeah, it had a that was a 354 Perkins 354. with a turbo. But and then over here, I don't have a saw on it right now. But yeah, I was just gonna say we gotta go check out your homemade yeah. firewood cutter. I can put a saw on it quick, and if you want a video of it. Grab my 250, put some gas and oil in it, 916 socket on the impact. Uh, so this is just a machine slide that I got from my uncle. He's going to grab a saw now, but you bolt a saw here, hook gas and oil up to it. This slides back and forth, and this stops at 16 inches. You chunk your wood up, that way it doesn't build up in a pile like this. But uh, You got some hefty firewood out of that big log. Yeah, it probably won't even fit through there. but. The goal is to have this wall closed off, and then I want to find a little short low hay elevator or even just the drag and make my own guide for it. Back the dump trailer over there and have it convey mm -hmm. out, you know, and dump right in there. But now, last time I was over here, you didn't have this addition on. No, I just put this on not too long ago, but poured the concrete a year ago, but I've just been waiting on the time and talking myself into actually taking the time to do it but yeah it's a lot nicer now that it's done but. I think 
more questions to ask you because you gave me the rundown the last time I was over here. Mm-hmm. I like that post you got with that big old knot in it though. It's called a burl. And I don't know exactly what causes it, but all it really is is just the growth rings get virtually like, they look like worms in there. They're just a bunch of swirls. But people will get burls six or eight foot around and they'll slice them and make tabletops out of them. Yeah, and bring they were like thousands of dollars. Good chunk of money. But yeah, that's the only reason I bought that tree was just for that because I wanted I wanted it as a post in here. But yeah, you're looking for a bandsaw because you end up with a bunch of pieces like that that you can't cut up because you saw what what's this? The saw can only get down to two and two and three quarters of an inch is absolute minimum because that saw was designed to cut beams in one inch boards so they would square their log make their one inch boards so they got down to their beam they never had to get down to making anything small but so if i was going after an inch and a half board for a hay wagon or something i'd say this piece of oak right here by the time you take an inch and a half off for what you're cutting plus a quarter inch of curve you're less than two and three quarters of an inch, so I can't, I virtually can't use that. Now, if I wanted four by fours or something, I could, but if I had a bandsaw, you know, you could resaw that and get mm -hmm. either two inch and a half boards or two inch and a half boards and a one inch or something, but um, this is all oak. That's all oak. This is oak. Pile with the white dots is cherry. That pile's firewood. It's gonna be firewood. And you said when you're looking at logs, you try to get a 12 by 12. It just depends. A 12 by 12 or... I don't, I normally, if somebody had something they were going to bring over and they wanted me to saw for them, I wouldn't cut anything that was smaller than 10 inches diameter on the small end. Because by the time you take a 10 inch and you get it squared up, you're going to be at a five and a half maybe. And that really isn't worth cutting. But like this log here on the bottom, it looks small compared to the rest of them, but if I'm looking for a 4x8 runner for a hay wagon, virtually I need an 8x8 to get two 4x8s out of it, which you can get two 4x8s out of that and some inch boards on the sides, which I need for the edges or for the back rack on a hay wagon. So it just kind of depends what I'm looking to do with it. But um, like I say, if you got a long log that's got a crook in it, you know, you can cut it in half and get two straight short logs out of it but it just kind of depends i got some pretty beefy logs back here that i'm gonna have slab but i don't know didn't you find this chainsaw on the side of the road or something no not this one the other the one, one that, that you had in the it. one that's normally on it i found in a basement stairwell <laughs> and it wasn't running i pulled the head off of it and it was it looked like cottage cheese in there it was all jacked up. Got it running, and all it ever does out here is runs the firewood chunker. Is that the 260? Yeah. Slide up for this is your backup since you got holes drilled in it, or did yeah. you change the blade? No. I gotta do some carb work on that one. You don't have this one where you can got it plumbed into your oil. No, this gas. one isn't. This one isn't plumbed in.
That's it. Nothing Pretty cool. slick. Yeah. Pretty works. slick or something you just threw together. Right. Works better than That's what I'm it. saying. If there's four people here, you know, one per two people can be down there, one person carrying boards, and one person can chunk it as you go, and then it doesn't ever pile up like this. It's kind of a pain once it is piled up, you know, because it's easier if you can stand here and mm -hmm. do it. And then once I have that little conveyor in here, it'll be that'll be great. But I want to find some steel, like some little tin gas tanks for here, because mm -hmm. these ports were they're just you need two motorcycle gas tanks. Right. Yeah. Or two little. I was thinking like a rototiller gas tanks, the little tin ones. Yeah. Would be perfect. They already got the port in the bottom of them, you know. But these ones kind of leak. But it was just. I didn't even know if the idea was going to work, so I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on it, but it works, so. And you probably didn't spend any money on it, did you? No, I got the slide for free, I got the saw for free, the posts I got for free, the rollers, I got four rollers for a hundred bucks, so nothing in there, cut the wood. I don't remember where the gas cans come from, but I know I didn't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Somebody's I got this board. Yeah, but, I think somebody got a little close with the saw. Yeah. But a couple times. Replaceable, so. It's a good thing about making it out of wood. It won't dull the blade and That's you replace right. it. Yep. Concrete hurts chainsaws. Yeah. Metal hurts chainsaws. Stone I wish chainsaws. it was back just a little further. I thought about, um, you know, if you could move this back here, mm -hmm. but then you're pushing the saw into it and it's trying to cut up, so you'd have to have a way to hold down on it but that's just kind of dead space back there. But once the wall's in there, in theory, once the wall's in there, if the conveyor goes through, you know, you could put a shelf or something back there. The smoker isn't gonna be there forever. I just finished it, but I don't know. Yeah. It works really good though. It's pretty slick. I think you, you got a video on your YouTube. And you got like five guys here running everything, don't yeah, you? Yeah, that was my little phone holder. <laughs> Oh, he showed me over here too. He's got his, his 1901 sawmills laser guided. Oh yeah, that's a $68 laser at Menards, and I just got my 2021 January price sheet, and uh, it's just a line laser from Menards, but it shines on the log. That'd be the inside of the blade. But like I say, I need to move it down because you can't hardly see it. I mean, mm -hmm. right here's the end of the line. Yeah. But that's just to get you close. Yeah. Because what I was running into is, you know, I would kind of line the blade up and then take the axe and chop all the bark off of it. And then I wouldn't even be cutting right there. <laughs> so I just spent five minutes chopping all the bark off. But I got my January price sheet from the saw shop. A legit laser like you would find in a production sawmill starts at 750 bucks yeah that's too much for 750 bucks the sun will be cutting the log too <laughs> but they're super bright but nah that's all right but we just had new hold downs made here's a new one here's the old ones all right i'm them no those are stainless 304 And here's what happens when it's really cold out and you're trying to run everything. This one actually got ran into the blade one time. Yeah. But. And that one's been welded a couple Just sheared times. it right off, yeah. But. And you put the pressure on them and they're bent. Yep. Here's the replacement teeth. That's what just the tooth looks like. And then they got a holder. A little yeah. tool. Right. Yep. So that's the tooth. Here's the grinder that everybody saw earlier. Here's the set screws I was talking about. You gotta adjust that three different ways. And yeah, it's just a real pain in the neck. I don't remember which one of these the shoulders is. I think it's this one. Yep, so here's This is a different, this is called a standall bit. It looks different than, 
these are regular bits you can see the shape here mm -hmm. the difference is the regular bit is like a spring to fall bit but when you're cutting frozen logs in the winter the standall is supposed to get rid of the chips a little easier so this slides into the saw and this rides in here and then the whole thing gets pinched in as you can see here yep. so the tooth is replaceable and the shank is replaceable pretty slick yeah well you said you had to leave at what 10 30 yeah sometimes like that sometimes it's 10 o'clock yeah. well that's uh the video for the sawmill if you want to see more he's uh painfully making videos on his youtube channel they're pretty iPhone. sickly they're pretty sad to watch straight up and down there's this camera mount over there and it's everywhere everywhere there's a random chunk of wood just camera mount yep. <laughs> normally i got a can koozie with a zip tie and the old cell phone rides right, right there <laughs> so i can watch what's going on but yeah we'll try to get him hooked up with good video equipment and yeah. figure something out one day we'll get there one day one step so. at a time all righty now i got wood i gotta go put on my trailer that's right sell go, a log go make another video yep yep so let's get at her yep